Glenn McQuaid grew up in Dublin, Ireland, and developed an affinity for horror films after watching countless ones on the BBC. On Saturday nights, they'd run a double bill of horror films, many of which from the Hammer and RKO catalog. All the classic monster movies, from Dracula to Frankenstein, and even mysteries like Paranoiac. This went on for years, and he developed a healthy passion for the genre. He hoped that one day, he'd be able to make his entry into horror. As he got older, reality set in, and he became an artist who worked in the advertising field. He had an extensive background in animation and motion graphics that he felt could be put to better use elsewhere. Years later, he was able to use his animation skills to land him various jobs designing titles for movies, like Kissing Jessica Stein. Things changed once he was hired to do some work for the company Glass Eye Picks. Glass Eye Picks is an independent film studio founded by Larry Fessenden that focuses mostly on horror. McQuaid created titles for the off-season, and in 2005, he became the visual effects supervisor on Ty West's first feature, The Roost. During this time, he was thinking about making his own horror film. He thought back to the films he saw as a kid and realized there was a horror theme that was rarely touched on. Grave Robbers. McQuaid was fascinated with tales of grave robbers and was surprised at how little the subject matter had been used in movies. The idea intrigued him, and he wrote a tale about a grave robber's first night on the job called The Resurrection Apprentice. He showed this to Fessenden and was able to get him to act in the film as the older grave robber, Willie. McQuaid decided to make it a horror drama short film and self-finance the production. They shot the short in Jersey City, New Jersey, and sometime later it played in a few film festivals. McQuaid loved the characters he created and thought about using them in a full-length feature. He began writing and trying to expand the story he only touched on in The Resurrection Apprentice. He wrote a full script and spoke to Fessenden about him producing and reprising his role in the full feature. The script he wrote was about a group of grave robbers sitting at a campfire telling stories. Somewhere along the line, he decided to go back to The Resurrection Apprentice and make it all about one guy and his mentor. Originally, The Resurrection Apprentice was more of a horror drama, but when McQuaid wrote it into a full feature, it took shape as more of a horror comedy. A very dark horror comedy. He took inspiration from the films he grew up watching, as well as grave robbing films like The Body Snatcher, The Doctor and the Devils, and The Flesh and the Fiends. He made the characters of Willie and Arthur a sort of grave-robbing version of Abbott and Costello. He put these two likable weirdos in a world where the supernatural was not uncommon. Vampires, zombies, and other sort of oddities existed, and you never knew what these two would dig up. For research, he read books like Gallo's Speeches in 18th Century Ireland by James Kelly, and The Italian Boy, A Tale of Murder and Body Snatching in 1830s London by Sarah Wise. Considering the theme, he changed the name of the film to I Sell the Dead. Originally, the concept was to make this a small production. It would be an 18th century period piece shot for under $100,000 on digital video, with a relatively no-name cast and done mostly on green screen. They were moving ahead with the production until producer Peter Pope got involved. He saw the potential for the film to be much greater than a small green screen film. He helped them to increase the film's budget and work to get some named talent involved. For the time, the project was put on hold while they worked to make it bigger. In 2006, McQuaid worked as the visual effects coordinator and second unit director on the Glass Eye Picks production The Last Winter. During the filming, he got to know the star of the film, Ron Perlman. He was thinking to himself how he would love to get Perlman to star in his movie and approached him with a copy of the script. Perlman's one of those rare actors who'll jump between blockbuster Hollywood film and small independent film. He loved working on independent films because they're more flexible and fun. Perlman read the script but turned down the role. McQuaid asked him why, and Perlman wrote him a message detailing what he considered were the problems with the script. McQuaid rewrote the script, addressing Perlman's concerns, and sent him the new copy. After reading it, he agreed to be in the film. As the script for the film began to take shape, McQuaid saw it in his head as an almost comic book-style film, reminiscent of the EC horror comics. He loved the work of Bram Ravel and was able to get him to adapt his script to a comic. Polk was a huge fan of the TV series Lost and told McQuaid he envisioned Dominic Monaghan as the assistant, Arthur Blake. They sent Monaghan a copy of the script, as well as the comic and the short film. Monaghan was not a fan of horror, but the whole package intrigued him. He said when he picks his roles, he looks for one of three things. A good script, good actors, and a good director. He said with this, he could see it had all three. He joined the cast, but they had to figure out a way to work around his Lost schedule. He was finishing working on season 3 of the show and wouldn't be available until after that. McQuaid worked with legendary horror icon Angus Scrimm on the film The Off Season. He contacted him and was able to get him to play the role of the evil Dr. Quint. For the part of Fanny, they hired Brenda Cooney, who also had a part in The Resurrection Apprentice. 
Now with a larger budget, they were looking at shooting the film on sets, but decided it would be a better idea to shoot on location. They began to location scout, but that begged the question, how do you shoot a Victorian era period piece for a relatively low budget in New York? While this was going on, they ran into another problem. No matter how they shifted the schedule, Ron Perlman wouldn't be available. He had signed on to star in Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy 2, which would be shooting in Budapest right when they were hoping to film. McQuaid and the producers weighed their options. They wanted Perlman, but they would have to delay the shoot, which would throw everyone else's schedule into disarray. Initially, they started to look for someone else to cast in the role. Perlman really wanted to be in the film, so they came to an agreement. Since Perlman was only needed for a few scenes, they would shoot the bulk of the film, wrap, and five months later they'd rejoin to film the Perlman scenes. The script for the film was a fairly non-traditional one. It didn't have the usual three-act structure, but was more of an anthology. The framework would be Arthur telling Father Duffy his exploits as a grave robber, with his friend and mentor, Willie Grimes. The insert stories would be told as flashbacks. With a budget of roughly $450,000, they started filming in Staten Island, New York in the spring of 2007. For the look of the film, he took inspiration from John Badham's Dracula and the Wicker Man. McQuaid was originally thinking of shooting the whole thing black and white, but decided against it. Now with a bigger budget, they were able to afford to shoot the movie on 35mm film rather than digital video. They shot most of the film in Staten Island, New York. They acquired many locations that looked better and were much cheaper than anything they could have built. The opening of the film was shot in Fort Wadsworth on Staten Island. They kept the camera angle low because if you could see over the walls, you'd see the Verrazano Bridge. McQuaid was a big rugby player and many of the extras in the background during the opening were his teammates. Within the film was the tavern The Fortune of War. They found an East Valley pub called The Scratcher, owned by an Irish actor, and convinced him to let them film there. They redressed the location and made it unrecognizable. The tavern in the script was based on the pub in The Italian Boy. It was a pub in London where the grave robbers would meet. The cemetery in the film was the Woodland Cemetery, with graves dating back as far as the 1850s. Within the film, they used footage from The Resurrection Apprentice for the part where Arthur met Willie. So much of the script took place in graveyards, McQuaid wrote the last segment to take place on a beach to mix things up. The beach was Camaset State Historic Park on Long Island. For the zombies, McQuaid had a specific look in mind, waterlogged. For reference, he used the zombies from the movie Shockwaves and the zombies from the Something to Tide You Over segment from Creepshow. While working on the film, they discovered Angus Scrim knew how to play the violin. They discussed having his character play the violin and they wrote a scene for him. Scrim wanted to do it, but he'd need time to practice up a bit since he hadn't played in several decades. After some time rehearsing, he warmed back up and they were able to get the actor to play this piece for the film. In the beginning, Willie gets put in a guillotine. It was a prop that terrified Fessenden. He did the scene, but leading up to it, he was having nightmares of the prop failing and cutting off his head. Inside the fort was a door they built for the film. The owners of the fort kept it and joked they'd tell tourists it was the original door from the 1800s. They tried to keep the film as practical as possible, but still had to do some CG. Mostly for some digital matte animations and a few green screen scenes. There's a scene in the film where a baby chick gets crushed by a boot. This wasn't CG and the animal wasn't harmed. They cut a hole in the boot and placed it over the chick. Then they filmed it coming upwards, but ran the film in reverse to make it look like the chick was being crushed. McQuaid was friends with a guy who was missing a foot, so they hired him to play a footless zombie. While some might categorize this as a zombie film, it's really more of a supernatural film. The movie was both dark and silly at times. They worked hard to blend the two without it ever going too far in either direction. However, McQuaid recognized that when the grave robbing duo found the corpse of an alien, that would be the make or break moment with the audience. They shot the bulk of the film in 22 days. Now they had five months to wait until they'd rejoin to film the remainder with Perlman. During this time, McQuaid edited the film and worked in post. McQuaid had a specific look he wanted for the opening, so he did the intro animation himself. Things started back up again in November. Perlman stopped in New York on his way back from shooting Hellboy 2. He filmed his interrogation scenes with Monaghan over the course of three days. Since the team was together again, they used this time to film some pickup shots and other second unit work. After that, they were all done, and McQuaid could put the whole film together. With the film completed, they took it to various film festivals, where it did very well. It won Best Independent Feature at Toronto After Dark in 2008. It won Best Performance for Larry Fessenden and Best Cinematography at the Slamdance Film Festival in 2009. The movie was generally well received with critics, although a few felt that there was no plot. There is a plot, it's just told in a very non-traditional way. 
which just helps the movie to stand out further. It was picked up for distribution by IFC and was released on Blu-ray in 2010. A copy of the comic was also included with the Blu-ray. McQuaid is very proud of the film and loved the characters of Blake and Grimes. He has more adventures for the duo planned if he can get a sequel off the ground. He loved the chemistry between Fessenden and Monaghan, and knew there'd be plenty of material he could come up with for future installments. There was a sequel announced in 2009, but as of currently, it hasn't happened. McQuaid's directed twice since then. He did a segment for the anthology VHS, and he also did a segment for the anthology Chilling Visions. He still works for Glass Eye Picks doing visual effects. I Sell the Dead is an outstanding horror comedy that more people need to see. It balances the scares with the absurd, and it feels like a hammer horror comedy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oi! You mad bastard! Come on, let's go! Leave it! <laughs> McQuay did an excellent job for a first-time director. He worked with some tremendously talented people who made the film look like it cost way more than it did. Fessenden and Monaghan are wonderful together, and you never doubt their characters. They really seem like these two lovable, hard-drinking grave robbers. As bizarre as that sounds. Angus Scrimm is wonderful as always in his role of the Doctor, and Perlman is great in his screen time. Even though they both have limited roles, what they bring to the film greatly elevates it. The film frequently delves into the extraordinary, but it does it with such passion that you never question it. Even when it gets silly. It's funny when it needs to be, and scary when it needs to be. Horror comedies are hard to get right, but this movie nails it. If you haven't seen it, I recommend checking it out immediately. I know it's a long shot, but hopefully one day we'll be able to see the further adventures of Blake and Grimes. Do you have anything to say for yourself before the, uh... Wow. I suppose you wouldn't believe me if I told you I was innocent. Innocent? Of murder, that is. The, uh, despicable grave-robbing part. Sounds about right. 